Hello, and this is part six of a series on how to design a timber frame using Fusion 360. In this part, I'm going to create the top plates and scarf joints in those top plates. So let's get started. So let's first take a look at where the model stands after our last video. We now have four independent bents that we can um, hide and show. And we did that by uh, copying and mirroring uh, uh, existing bents. So next off, we're going to put a top plate on wall A that's uh, initially going to span across these four posts. And then we'll divide it up into two plates um, and put a scarf joint in it. So the very first thing I'm going to do is create a new component. And I'm going to call this wall... A. And so wall A is now activated and I'm going to make two plates inside wall A. And I am going to call the first one plate A 1, 2 because it's going to span across bents 1 and 2 and it's in wall A. And then I'm going to go back to activate wall A because I want the next created component to be on the same level. So I'm going to call this one plate A. It's still in wall A and it's going to span from bents 3 to 4. So plate A34. Okay. So now I'm going to go back and activate wall A and we're going to do our sketching um, inside that upper level component because I'm going to use that sketch to generate bodies within these two sublevel components. Um, so it, it's, you know, it's certainly optional where you put this sketch, but I would think uh, it's a little bit more logical to put it in the top level component. Okay, so I'm going to pre-select a surface by clicking on this post and create a sketch. Now, I could start by snapping to this point. But keep in mind, we're actually going to be a half inch down. This post is already extruded a half inch up into the top plate. So I think what I'm going to do is just purposely stay away from this corner. So I'll hit R for rect. I still want to be coincident with this line right here, the outside of the post. And I'm going to zoom out and come down here. And I want to be coincident with this side of the building and click. Um, and now I'll start putting some dimensions in. So I'm dimensioning this to be eight inches tall. And another thing we need to do is position it vertically. So I think uh, what I'm going to do here is actually um, say that this point right here is going to be a particular distance from that point and that should be seven and a half inches. So that gets us into the proper location for this top plate. And you can see that our sketch is now fully defined. It's all black. Okay, so I could extrude this right now, but instead of doing that, I think I'm gonna put the, basically in the same sketch, we're gonna start our scarf joint. Okay, so I'm gonna get some vertical lines going here. I'm going to press L for line and snap to the top and bottom of the sketch that we just started. And then do another one out here somewhere. Okay, and then I will get a distance between these two lines and set that for two feet. So that's basically the overlap, um, the extent of the overlap in our scarf joint. And I can move these lines anywhere along this plate, essentially. So that's very handy. Um, and I think the way we're going to lock that in is to do a dimension from this line right here to the start of our scarf joint right here. And so I think, um, well, you know what? I don't want to do it from that side. I want to do it from this side. So I'm going to hit D again, click here, and click here. 
is this will be the length of one of these timbers. And let's see what we get. Um, it's typical to locate um, a scarf joint over a brace, but I think we have such a long building here, we also have to be conscious of um, timber sizes. So if I set this one, let's see, let's see if I set this to 22 feet, and then I'm going to do an inspect, so I'll press I, and I'm going to go from this line to this line and see what our other timber would would be and it's 21 foot 8 inches um, so that's pretty good they're both you know under 24 um, so I'm gonna go with those dimensions all right so now let's finish off our scarf joint so I'm gonna look straight at it so I'm gonna use the look at command here in the sketch palette and zoom out a little bit and so I want to do a diagonal line here, intersect these two lines, okay, and then to lock this down, I'm going to get a dimension from this point to this point, set that to two inches, and do the same up here. Now one shortcut, instead of typing in two inches, I can click here and go to any other dimension, so I'm going to do that. And then if we were to change this dimension, this one will automatically change to match it. And you see that there's an FX colon, which means it's a function, which means there's a formula behind it. If I double click on this, you can see this is dimension 140 is the formula, which this happens to be dimension 140 right here. So, and you can see that in the lower right corner of the screen. All right. So we've got our, um, our angle going here, um, and that will, that will get us going for the basic extrusion. Um, so let us finish the sketch, and then we're going to go into um, the first plate right here and activate that, and then hit E for extrude. And now we want to select these two surfaces and you can see what that's going to generate so i'm going to extrude this backwards and type in eight inches so we now have a very rudimentary scarf joint there um, and i can do the same i'm going to activate plate a34 and hit e for extrude and then select two surfaces here and in this case, I want to pull it straight this way and type in 8 inches. Okay, so if I was to hide the sketches right now, you can see what we have, which is basically just kind of a fancy half lap. But I do want to put tenons in here to kind of lock it in from twisting uh, in, you know, in one dimension. So um, I think we can do that in one sketch if we're clever. So I'm going to go up to wall A again and open up our sketches and let's see if I, you know what, I'm going to do a new sketch because I'm going to be on the top level here. So let's name this and this is going to be our plate sketch and then I'm going to pre-select this surface and create a new sketch. Um, kind of losing my orientation here. So I'm going to use the, the wheel to the um, view cube to get it back here. All right, so if I tip up a little bit, you'll see where we're at. Um, so I want a sketch that's going to define a tenon here. So I'm going to get my rectangle tool. I'm going to coincide with this line. And then I want something that is two inches thick and four inches long. Okay, now that should not be fully defined, and it's not, so I can move this around. Um, to lock that down, I'm going to get a dimension from here to here and set that at two inches. Okay, now we also need a tenon sketch down here. Our sketch plane is right here, so I think I'm actually going to do a second sketch. Um, we could do some fancy projection here and try to do this, but I think this is going to make more sense. 
So I'm going to finish the sketch and I'm going to call this 10 and 1, the sketch that we just did, and then come down here, select, create a new sketch. And this is going to be our second tenon. So let me orbit up here so that we know where we are in the building. And I'm going to put the sketch for a tenon down here. So I'm going to press R, coincide with this line, and make this 2 inches by 4 inches, and press Enter, and then get my dimension tool and set that tenon to 2 inches from the edge of the timber. Okay. So now we have the sketches we need to make a tenon. Um, let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to finish my sketch. I'm going to rename the sketch we were just in to tenon 2. Okay, now we want to see our sketches, at least those two tenon sketches. And before we do the extrude here, we want to select the proper plate. So if we're in plate 1, 2, A1, 2, um, we actually want this to be the tenon that's going to join this body. So E for extrude. I'll click here. I'll push this up. Um, two inches so it's actually going to be minus two inches and press enter <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and hide this plate because we really couldn't see what was happening there so now we have the tenon defined as part of this scarf joint so let's do the similar thing on the other plate I'm gonna select that so that oh and I need to show it too so I'm making this one visible. And now we can go down to this bottom sketch, click on, oh, here it is. Actually, the top sketch. We want to click on this, extrude, bring this down, type in two inches. Right? I want to type in minus two inches. And make sure that it's set to join here in the operation in our dialog box. Okay. So now within plate... A, 1, 2, and within plate A, 3, 4, we should have a single body in each, and we should be able to hide um, each body separately. So one thing I just noticed, I did not extrude these plates in the proper direction. And you can see that when I did, the top plate is sitting outside of those posts. So we're going to go back and fix that and maybe have to fix these uh, tenons as well. So I'm going to activate plate A12. So I have its timeline right here. And if I scrub the timeline backwards, you can see the tenon just went away. If I go back one more, you can see the whole timber went away. So I know that this extrusion is the one I want to edit. So I'm going to right click and go to Edit Feature, and you can see that this extrude is going 8 inches in this direction away from the building. I want to go back into the building, so I'm going to change that to a negative, and that positions that properly. Okay, and I'm going to go to plate A34, activate that, and go to its first extrusion, edit that, and same problem. I need that to be a negative 8 instead of a positive 8. Okay, so that fixed the, the uh, position of the top plates. Now let's see if our tenons are screwed up. And in fact they are. They're off in space here. So, um, this is a sketch issue. So I'm going to go to plate 1, A12. And, oh, you know what? We put our sketches in the wall, upper level wall component. So I'm going to go to 10 and 1 sketch and edit that. And now I can see it was 2 inches from where the uh, post used to be. I'm sorry, the plate used to be. So I'm going to set this. I'm going to delete this dimension <coughs> right here. This one is still good, so I'll get that out of the way there. And I'm going to say, okay, the distance from here to the outside is going to be 2 inches. And that repositions the tenon properly relative to our plate. So I'll finish that sketch. 
and then I'll do the same for 10 and 2. Edit that, same issue here. So basically this dimension, I want to delete that, and I want to say D to get in dimension, and then click on this point and this edge and say that's 2 inches. <clears throat> so that's going to relocate that. Okay, and finish. So now let's examine um, each one of these plates. So I'm going to consolidate the sketches folder and just look at plate A12. It is now positioned properly on top of the posts and it has its tenon um, reference from the outside of the building. Okay, let's do the same for the other plate. And we can see we have the same thing going here. So um, that is fixed. So let's now move on to cutting um, the joinery in these two plates. So we're going to do the same combine feature that we did for other joinery. So I go up to combine. I select my target component, which is this plate right here. And then I'm going to select my tool bodies. So basically, I'm going to select three things here. I'm going to select the other um, top plate and also these two posts because they have tenons um, and reductions that cut into this top plate. And for operation, I'm going to go to cut and I'm going to say keep my tools and do an OK. And now if I hide, well, let's isolate this plate. So if I go to isolate, you'll see, if I click outside of it here, we've got a mortise cut for that tenon coming from the other plate. And if I scroll up here, we have a housing and a mortise. And remember, this one was two inches from the front of the building. And this one's a full seven and a half inches. So it looks like we've got what we need there. Um, let's go to plate 3, 4, show that, activate that, actually click here and unisolate so we see the rest of the building. Um, all right, so now we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to do another combine, and I'm going to click on the timber that I want the mortises to show up in, and then I'm going to click on all of the other timbers that cut into this timber. So this bottom scarf, its tenon is going to cut in. And these two posts right here. And we want to keep our tools, do a cut, do an OK. And now if we right click isolate, let me try that again. Over here, right click isolate. Now, one thing I just noticed is I don't see a mortise here. So maybe something got screwed up in that sketch that made that tenon, or the extrude is screwed up. So let's go find it. So basically, I think that because there is no mortise here, the problem is in the A12 plate. So I'm going to activate that. I'm going to right click and unisolate this guy. And let's see if we hide the other plate. Let's see if we are actually missing a tenon here. Yes, we are. Okay, so let's figure out why. So we're going to go back in the timeline, and the second extrude should be the tenon itself. And there it is. It's set to join, so I'm going to do an OK. And it doesn't appear there. So let's open up and take a look. In our bodies, we have only a single body. Um, so I'm a little perplexed as to what's going on here. So I'm going to stop the recording and try to figure it out. And when I do, I'll come right back. Okay, so I now understand what's going on. And it makes perfect sense. And we're going to have to take another approach, actually, to cut this mortise. So what's happening, I believe, is that... Um, before these mortises are cut, so let's go back in the timeline. Um, at this point, we haven't done the two combines. 
And at this point, we do have a tenon on each of these plates. But also notice that when we use this timber as a cutter, it's going to cut the tenon off that the uh, plate A34 has. This, this edge right here is going to cut it right off. So Fusion was acting properly. I was just um, surprised by that. And um, so I think we're going to take another approach here. So I'm going to go down to my timeline and I shift clicked on the two combined features and I'm just going to delete them. So now we're starting off with our two plates that both have tenons in them. Um, and we're going to basically use the same um, sketch that we had for the tenons to do the mortises. So we're going to go back up here to our sketches and make sure these two tenon sketches are visible. Then I'm going to activate plate A12, which is here. And I think I'll go ahead and hide the other one. So now I have a sketch right here and I can hover over it and manually do the extrude. So I'm going to press E for extrude, push that down and type in two inches. Oops, I went in the wrong direction. So I'm going to edit my feature down here in the timeline and type in negative two. Okay, let me go back to that feature again and be a little bit more careful. So I'm going to edit the extrude. We don't want to join here. We want a cut operation, negative two inches. Okay, so there is our mortise. Um, and let's do the same thing on the other plate. So I'm going to activate it and show it and hide the, the first plate. And now we can see our surface that we want to cut. So I'm going to do an E for extrude push this up. Oops. Let's try that again. I'm going to select that surface, push this up. Fusion this time is automatically in cut mode. So I type in minus two and enter and there's our mortise. So let me go ahead and hide the sketches so you can see it a little bit better. So now when we put the two plates together, you see um, the tenon fitting into the mortise. Okay. So we are going to still use the combined feature to get the um, mortises for these posts cut in each plate. So I will go up to combine and I'm going to select our target body, which is going to be this first plate. And then tool bodies, I'm going to select the two posts that intersect it. Make sure we're in a cut operation. Make sure we keep our tools and do an OK. And then I will do another combine, selecting the other plate, and then getting the post uh, out of bent three and out of bent four, cut, keep tools, and OK. So now we should be able to right click and isolate on the first plate, <coughs> click outside of it, and we can see we have a housing and a mortise that stops two inches short of the end of this timber. And then we have what should be seven and a half inches, which it is, um, for the second post, a housing and a mortise. And on the top side, we still have our mortise and our tenon. So let me unisolate that by right clicking on it and right click on this one and isolate it and take a look here make sure that we've got um, all of our joinery. There's the mortise for the tenon from the other plate. There's the inside post um, housing and mortise. And here's the housing and mortise for the outside right there. And again, if I click on this line, this should be five and a half inches. This should be seven and a half. So if I do an inspect from this line, oops, let me start that again. I for inspect, click here and here. It's two inches away from the end of the building. Okay, so we now have our first two plates. Let me unisolate. Our first two plates are created. 
So before we reproduce these plates, I want to make one thing clear here. Um, I'm going to do a move and actually move this timber straight up. So I want to select components and this is the component I want to move. Um, oops, I'm in point to point mode. There we go. Okay, so you can see I'm kind of simulating how a crane would lower this um, timber down. <clears throat> you can see that this would work, right? The tenon is going to, let me zoom in a little bit. The tenon here is going to fit into the mortise just fine and into the other tenons uh, on the post. If we did the opposite, it's not going to work. If I do a move here, select components, pick this component, you can see as I move this up, it's impossible. We're going through the lap joint and that's not going to work at all. So this one's got to go on first. Uh, I guess I would call this the receiver plate. I don't know what the official term is, um, but let me cancel that. It would be nice to put that receiver plate in wall B over here, spanning posts three and four. That way, this first plate locks in bents one and two, and then this plate over here would lock in bents three and four. So when we reproduce these two guys and put them up in wall B, um, we want to do two things. We want to spin it around 180 degrees, but by doing so, our mortises are going to be on the wrong side for these post tenons to fit in. So we've also got to make a mirror image. So I think I would do the mirror image first, and then when we start moving it around, we're going to rotate it 180 degrees. So we are actually going to mirror wall A to generate wall B. So first let me collapse wall A down. And I'm going to go up to the mirror command. But before I do that, I want to make sure that um, this newly generated component, which is going to get generated by the mirror command, ends up in the right spot in the browser. So I'm going to make sure that the top level component is selected because I want to eventually generate a wall B here through the mirror command that's on the same level as wall A. And same level as our bents as well. So top level is selected. Go to mirror. Make sure that you're selecting components here. And then the easiest way here is to go to the browser and select all of wall A. That's what we want to mirror. And now if I click here, we, we get to select a mirror plane. The origin pops up. I'm going to pick this plane right here. And you can see that that ends up out on wall D, which is not where I want it, but it is a nice mirror image. So when we rotate this guy, the uh, mortises will be on the right side. So we'll go ahead and complete the mirror first. And then I'm going to rename this. So slow double click. This is going to be wall B. And then let's get wall B in position and also rotate it. So if I do a right click and a move um, and go to the free move as the move type here in the dialog box, I can um, pick one of these uh, rotation controls. This is the one I want and come around 180. Make sure that's exactly 180. And now, interestingly, it's back in its original position. So I want to move it up here into wall B. Um, I can do so in the same move command. I don't have to get out and start again. So I'm going to switch the move type to point to point, clicking there. And I'm going to click on this point. So that's my origin point. And it ought, the, the dialog box automatically went to target point. So I'm now going to click on this point as the target. And I'm seeing a preview. Now up here in the toolbar, I didn't point this out in some of the last moves, but uh, you see a capture position or a revert position. After I finished this, if I was to do an OK, these would still be here. 
and I'd eventually have to capture this position. But there's a check mark in Move Copy, so I'm going to capture the position when I OK out of this dialog box. And now you don't see those little uh, capture and revert um, tools in the toolbar. So let's take a look and see what we got. We are in the right position. Um, let's right click on wall B and isolate it. And then zoom in here and take a look and see. Um, there we go. We can see that the housings and mortises are on the proper side, on the same side as wall A. So I'm going to unisolate here. And then when we open this up, we can do our renaming here. So these are all going to be plate B. And now I'm going to look and see where is this um, in our model. I can see that that's stretching from bent 3 to bent 4. So I'm going to call this plate B. It's in wall B. 3, 4. And get rid of mirror. And so this uh, other plate, I'm going to slow double click on that to rename that. And this is going to be B. 1, 2, spanning from bents 1 to 2. Okay, so we are done with our wall B plates, um, and now we want to generate wall C and D. Um, I think what I would do is just um, copy these, cop make a copy of wall A and put it on wall C, make a copy of wall B and put it on wall D. So, um, I'm going to click on wall A, right click on it, and say I want to copy, and then right click on our top level, and do a paste new. And now um, let's go ahead and do a point to point move. So click here as our move type, point to point, and get this point right here, and then this point right here, boom we're in the right position. Okay, so now it's just kind of paperwork here where we go into wall A, rename that to wall C, and then open up wall C and change our plates to, all I have to do is change the A to a C here, rename our two plates. Okay. And then we will do the same thing with wall D. So we're going to go to wall B, right click on it, do a copy, go up to our top level, do a paste new, and then we can start this move just to see where we're at here. And now we're going to change our move type to point to point, and we're going to click on this point on our front plate and this point on our post, and the two plates are in position. And let's go in and rename wall D, and open up wall D in the browser and give these guys the proper name. So let's see, we copied B to D, so when I click on this plate, it's still in the 3-4 position. So all I have to do is change B to D on these two plates. And collapse things down. And then let's just um, make sure we did everything right. There's wall A, the two, the two plates of wall A anyway. And there's wall B, wall C, and wall D.